Hey guys, today it gets personal. About a month ago, I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers, Red's Rhetoric. He has a great video where he used dual observations of the ISS traversing across the face of the moon to calculate the height of the International Space Station. It's a really great video and I highly recommend you watch it. The link will be in the description. But then, a couple of days ago, I came across a video by Flat Earth mathematician, Dr. Zach, claiming that Red's math was good but stupid math. I almost had a heart attack. No Red, not you. You were one of my first channels to sub to. I watched your amazing videos of rockets going up and boosters coming down. This can't be. Is it really possible? But before the first spherical tear even cleared my tear duct, I realized, Dr. Zach, you are an idiot. Because while the equations that Dr. Zach uses are mathematically correct, he displays no fundamental understanding when it comes to the application of those mathematics. Bottom line, Red's rhetoric was correct, and Dr. Zach is an idiot. So let's begin. <laughs> When you tell someone about the flat earth, they usually don't get the point. So some of those who know a little bit of math, they start testing things mathematically and of course, they get the results that are shown in the textbooks or Google or Giggle and they think that it's correct. The beautiful thing about mathematics is that it is universal. Mathematical concepts don't change based on the situation and weren't designed around a 3000 year old deception. Math can be tested by anyone with a pen and paper and for Zach to assert that math is situational is a gross display of his idiocracy and disconnect with the basic concepts of math, more specifically in this video, trigonometry. But they don't realize that everything is already calculated and no matter how good you are at math, if you don't understand the game, you will end up doing what they want you to do. You will be trapped inside your own head. Yes, Dr. Zach, there is this big math conspiracy game going on between the globalist elites and the flat earth simpletons. You are an idiot. You're probably asking yourself why I'm saying this. Well, I'm actually asking myself how much of your idiotic bullshit I'm going to be able to take before I go full-blown triggered on you, because you are an idiot. Well, a few people wanted me to watch a video of some guy who was trying to calculate the distance of the ISS using some good stupid math. And I'm calling it good stupid math because it's a good math, but it's also stupid. And you are an idiot. There is no such thing as stupid math. Even the concept of 1 plus 0 equals 1 is an important math concept when designing mathematical proofs. The only stupid math out there is when jackasses claim to understand math and then completely misapply it. Dr. Zach, you have officially triggered me because you are a fucking idiot. Obviously that guy is a troll or something. Anyone who's been long enough in this flat earth community knows who the trolls are. I'm not trying to offend him, but this is the truth. The truth is, you are a fucking idiot. Red consistently proves flat earth assertions wrong with an understanding of basic mathematics, detailed observations, and critical thinking. Before the end of this video, I am going to show you what you lack in the critical thinking department. Because Dr. Zach, you are a fucking idiot. If he thinks we are stupid, then why can't he just leave us alone, leave us alone kid. and go on with his life? For the same reason, I won't leave you fucking idiots alone. Your name has doctor on the front of it, so you present yourself as some kind of educated authority, when really, you're dumb as fuck. It's people like you that drive me to make videos like this to knock that fragile chip off your smug shoulder. Your misrepresentation of educational background is a true representation of your deceptive integrity. I'm gonna make it a point to debunk as many of your dumbass videos as I can because you are a fucking idiot. I don't debunk trolls, I just ignore them. But the reason why I'm making this video is because this is going to open other people's brain. And you wonder why we take pride in debunking dipshits like you. Let's open the underdeveloped brain of an impressionable youth and fill it with mathematical bullshit in an effort to persuade them to believe in your fantasy fucking world. Well, not on my watch, you fucking idiot. 
so my goal is not to debunk him but to use his video as an example to those who think that math proves anything I think this is a good video to help people get a point so Mr. Reds or whatever your name is you can insult me if you want but this is the first and the last thing you will ever receive from me to me you never existed and you will never exist let's just hope that after this video this is the last time we ever hear from you again one less idiot on the internet won't hurt anyone but due to my integrity i'm going to allow dr zach's video to play since this is the video we are discussing again i recommend going to red's channel and watching the unedited version if you are interested in the correct math used but for now we are going to let his video play through for the next few minutes now let's watch a little bit of his video. So the first thing we need to do is find angle A on our diagram. Okay. And since angle A equals angle B, mm -hmm. we can knock out two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. Now the angular size of the moon is known. Mm -hmm. A simple search on Google will show that it's about 0.52 degrees wide as seen from Earth. If we overlay our two tracks together, we can see that our two tracks span a certain amount of the moon. Okay. In counting the pixel diameter of the moon from Astronomy Live's footage, uh -huh. we see the moon is about 962 pixels wide. Wow. The span of our two tracks from center to center is about 224 pixels wide. Okay. If we take 962 and divide it by 224, okay. we get a ratio of 4.29 to 1. Okay. So, if we take the angular size of the moon as 0.52 degrees and divide it by the value we just found 4.29 that means angle a in our diagram comes out to 0.1212 degrees wow. and since angle a equals angle b mm -hmm. that means b is also equal to 0.1212 degrees. Wow. Now that we have angle B, we now need to find our baseline. Mm -hmm. Our baseline is the distance between myself and Astronomy mm -hmm. Live during our observation. And according to Google Earth and the Fire Ruler tool, mm -hmm. we were about 1.11 kilometers apart. Mm. Yeah, that was easy. Mm. Now we have everything we need to do some basic trigonometry and figure out how far away we were from the International Space Station during the observation. Okay. To do this, let's cut our triangle in half along with its values, making it a wow. right triangle. And what we're looking for is length x. Okay. Because length x is the distance between us and the International Space Station during the observation. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve for x. 0.555 kilometers divided by the tangent of 0.0606 degrees gives us a value for x of 524.73 kilometers or 326 0.05 miles. Oh. This means that during our observation, we were seeing the ISS from 326 miles away. Good shh. All right, let's analyze it. Here is his math. The pixels of the moon 962 divided by the pixels between the two tracks 224 equals 4.29. Now he takes the angular radius of the moon that is 0.52 and divides it by 4.29 and he gets 0.1212. So that is A and B angle. Now he just needed the distance between him and his troll friend, which is 1.11 kilometers. Now he decided to cut the triangle in half. So 0.1212 becomes 0.0606 and 1.11 kilometers becomes 0.555 kilometers. Now he wants the distance x, which is the distance to the ISS. So he did this. 0.555 divided by tangents of 0.0606 and he got 524 kilometers. Wow. 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 Impressive. That is just 116 kilometers more than the average altitude of the ISS. <laughs> wow. Very close. And you are a fucking idiot. You are assuming that the distance measured to the ISS was the distance above the ground. The distance measured was actually from the ISS to the observer. Honestly, 
What the fuck are you a doctor of? And how the fuck do I not catch that disease? I can't tell if you just didn't use the logical reasoning that you were blessed with or if you were intentionally trying to deceive your viewers. Either way, you are a fucking idiot. I looked up the pixels in his links, but I found no description of how he got the pixels of the moon, so I can't judge that. But I wonder if he just made it up to make his math look like that, kind of accurate. <laughs> oh no, Dr. Zack, Red's rhetoric doesn't get off that easy. If you are going to be calling him a fraud, let's make sure that he is factually correct. No matter how he got the pixels of the moon, we can plug a still image from his video into Photoshop and measure the pixels for ourselves. By analyzing the video myself, I have determined that in my 1920 by 1080 still image, the moon's diameter is 772 pixels wide at 72 pixels per inch, and the distance between the traversals is 180 pixels wide. By plugging the two numbers into my own calculator, I got 4.288888. So, after skeptical scrutiny, it can be confirmed that Red is being intellectually honest in his mathematical representation of the observations. You should stop wondering if he made shit up, take note of his integrity and methodology, and make future videos accordingly, because you are a fucking idiot. The most important number of everything he has done looks made up, and it has to be made up. To every flat earther ever, complicated mathematics looks made up. This is typically due to the lack of education that most flat earthers experience in their best effort to avoid indoctrination. This is my biggest problem with you, Dr. Zach. You had to have gotten your doctorate in flat earth science or social services. You can't even understand a simple trigonometry equation and you think it's bullshit but refuse to verify it yourself. You either don't fully comprehend the mathematics involved or you do and you're just being a dishonest fraud. It doesn't really matter because when it comes down to it, you are a fucking idiot. But anyway, I'm going to assume that his numbers are fairly accurate. Oh no, I've checked and they are. So he googled stuff and he filmed the ISS and did some impressive math and magically it matched with Google. Mathematically? Not magically, you fucking idiot. So therefore, the ISS is real. Wait, seriously? Yes, seriously. You can go outside and see it with your own fucking eyes, you fucking idiot. So I'm gonna give him an example here, and I will pray for him to understand the point. Now imagine I am NASA and Google Mr. Reds. And I'm gonna give you the distances you need. So I will give you the distance to the moon and the distance to the ISS. I will just make up a number, of course. Oh, this should be really fucking good. Let's make up some fantasy numbers and show how we can twist the math to fit our model. Typical fucking flat earth idiot. I actually can choose any distance to the moon and your beautiful math will match my math. Therefore, the ISS is gonna be real again, right? Mr. Rance, please do it. Let's not bother Red with your dumbass assertions, as I'm sure he doesn't mind me handling his lightweight, and I'm just itching at the nuts right now to prove how much of a fucking idiot you really fucking are. So I'm gonna make up a small number so I can zoom in and out easily in my software. So let's assume that the distance to the moon is 150,000 kilometers. The distance to the ISS is 211 kilometers. So these are my official numbers that you cannot change. Wait, what the fuck happened to you saying that we could just use any numbers? So now we have to use your fictitious numbers that are going to fit your fictitious calculations to confirm your fictitious fucking model. Okay, I'm still gonna prove you wrong even when using your imaginary numbers. Now you are as an investigator, you have to do your math to see if my ISS is really at that height. So let's continue with the official data that we already know. Moon radius is the same, 1738 kilometers. Angular radius therefore has to be 0 0.011 radians. And this is how we get it. We divide the radius of the moon by the distance. 
I am just doing what Google does, okay? Since one rating is 57.3 as Google says, then here is what we should do. 0 0.01586667 times 57.3 equals 0 0.66. A lot of 60s here. I don't know why. As a flat earther, you should know by now how much us globe earthers love Satan and our 666s. Not to mention, we are using your numbers here. Dr. Zach, are you actually a Satanist? We'll carry on, Dark Overlord. So its diameter is 1.32 degrees. Alright? And this is how we get it. 0.66 times 2 equals 1.32. We just double it, okay? Now, we keep your own pixels because we have no idea if they are correct or not, but we don't care. We're just gonna keep them because maybe they are correct. 962 pixels and 224 pixels. So we divide 962 by 224, so we get 4.29, all right? Now, we do what he did, 1.32, divided by 4.29 equals 0.307, which is angle A and B. Now, as we have angle A and B, we should find his baseline. We keep it as it is, 1.11 kilometers as well. We don't even have to change anything. Changing the distance to the moon and the ISS is more than enough. Now we cut the triangle in half like he did and we get this angle, 0.153. And the distance becomes 0.555 kilometers instead of 1.11 kilometers. Very simple math. So 0.555 kilometers divided by tangent of 0.153 degrees equals 207 kilometers. Very close, huh? If we use all the decimals, we get exactly 211 kilometers, like the distance I gave you at first. Oh wow, that is even more accurate than his math. Therefore, the ISS is more than real. And the moon is 150,000 kilometers this time. And you are a fucking idiot. How can you even make this dumbass assertion when you don't even know what distance you are fucking measuring? For your math trick to work, you must first calculate what the height of the ISS should be using all of the decimal points, then rework the equation using a restricted amount of decimal points, and then comparing the two numbers to see how close you are. Again, you are going to have to do the calculations first to get the numbers you desire, and working backwards on the calculations will also give you the numbers you started with. Your math may work with the intellectually weak flat earth community, but when you bring that weak shit to the globe earth arena, you will get exposed as the unintelligent idiot you actually are. I just proved that you dumb flat hearts. Please choose a random distance and do the same math and you will get an altitude of an ISS. You absolutely cannot just choose two random numbers for the distance to the moon and the height of the ISS. I implore any flat earther watching to just pick any two numbers to try to get this math to work. The interesting thing about Red's measurements was that he never used the given height of the ISS to reach his calculated height. Dr. Zach, you have proven beyond a reasonable doubt that you are not only intellectually dishonest, but that you are also a fucking idiot. Put the new distance to the moon and the ISS in Google and the world is fooled again. See math can fool people who think they are smart when they are not. Believe it or not, Dr. Zach, but you have just used yourself as a perfect example of good stupid math used by people who think they are smart when they are not. Every one of your calculations was exactly correct. However, you chose to apply the calculated answers to the incorrect math model. Let me break it down for you correctly. We will start with Red's observation first. Observer A is 1.11 kilometers away from observer B. They both had their optical devices pointed in the exact same direction. 
When making this observation, the observed parallax between the two observers was 0.1212 degrees or 0.0606 degrees per observer. He then applied trigonometry to a right triangle with an acute angle of 0.0606 degrees and a baseline of 0.55 kilometers, giving us the linear distance of X, which is 524.73 kilometers. Dr. Zach makes the idiotic mistake of asserting that this value represents the distance from the ISS to the ground. However, Red made it very clear that this value represented the distance between the ISS and the midpoint between the two observers. This distance is also equal to the distance for both observers to the ISS. Did you misrepresent the calculations in an effort to be disingenuous or are you just a fucking idiot? So now let's cover Dr. Zach's dumbass example. Dr. Zach will have you believe that you can just throw any two numbers out there and you will come up with the correct answer. However, Dr. Zach is a fucking idiot and he is trying to deceive you. Here's how he got his numbers. First, you must define one of these two values, either the distance to the moon or the distance to the ISS. These values are dependent on each other, therefore they cannot be just random, and I will show you what I mean in one moment. He gives the values of 150,000 kilometers to the moon and the distance to the ISS at 211 kilometers. Just before giving us these values, he says we can use any values and it will work, but then goes on to say that we aren't allowed to change these values. This is because these values are dependent on each other. So let's say he starts with the distance to the moon of 150,000 kilometers and we accept the verifiable observational evidence from red. We come up with this equation which gives us the parallax angle of 0.307 degrees. I have no argument there. This leads us to the equation which gives us the distance to the ISS of 207 kilometers and even states that if you use all the decimal points in the full calculation, it would come exactly to 211 kilometers. The problem is he never tells you where the fuck he gets his number of 211 kilometers. That's because any number other than 211 kilometers will be wrong. And that's why he says you aren't allowed to change that distance. So you can't just make up any two numbers numbers and these equations will work out. Not to mention, the linear distance you measured wasn't even to the ground, but to an observer on the ground, you fucking idiot. And for the kids watching at home, you are in for a treat, because there was a second part of the video that Dr. Zach selectively chose not to include in his video. In this portion of the video, Red calculates the height of the ISS using proper mathematics. I'm just gonna let this part of the video play, as Red does a perfect job of explaining himself, and he doesn't need my help. Good shit, but we're not done here because now we can find the altitude of the ISS from the ground. Because you see, Astronomy Live was kind enough to stop his telescope from moving only a second after the transit. This gave me an opportunity to get this measurement from the side of his LX200. At the time of the transit, the LX200 was at 53 degrees. And yep, just like that, we have yet another right triangle that we can solve. Value X this time will be the distance between the International Space Station and the ground. To find X, we solve this equation. 524.73 kilometers times the sine of 53 degrees. And when we do, we get an altitude of... 419.06 kilometers or 260.39 miles. And yes, that is even without taking into account the curvature of the Earth. And as you can see, the actual calculation of the height of the ISS is 419 kilometers, which is only 11 kilometers above its average orbital height. Not 116 kilometers like you asserted, you fucking idiot. Now before we end this video, I need to live up to a promise that I made earlier to take your mathematics and prove how wrong you are. 
So now that we have the angle of inclination, distance to the observation, and proper definition of what the 207 kilometers actually represents, let's calculate how far off Dr. Zach's calculated height is versus his asserted height of 211 kilometers. If we use Red's angle of inclination of 53 degrees, we get an elevation of 207 kilometers times sine 53 degrees, and the elevation of your fictional ISS is 165.3 32 kilometers, which is off by 46 kilometers. So when we take the 11 kilometers of distance measured from the distance of the calculated height of the ISS by red versus the accepted average orbital height of the ISS of 408 kilometers, we get an accuracy of 97.3%. When comparing your fantasy numbers that show how the ISS can exist anywhere at any proposed position, we get a difference of 46 kilometers from the average orbital height that you provided of 211 kilometers, giving you an accuracy of only 78.20%. And as you can see, Dr. Zach's impotent mathematics just don't stand up to scrutiny because all flat earthers, and especially Dr. Zach, are fucking idiots. Now I'd like to take the time out to thank Dr. Zach and whatever University of Brazil online college he went to for letting Professor Baloo teach him advanced mathematics. It was a true pleasure narrating you debunking yourself because Dr. Zach, you are a fucking idiot. So I'm going to talk to my subscribers for a moment. At the end of each of my videos, I like to tell you guys how much I appreciate your support. Whether it's through the comments or simply subscribing and sharing my videos, I truly couldn't have grown as fast as I have without each one of you. So thanks. And I'd also like to give a special shout out to Red's Rhetoric for allowing me to debunk this video first. If you are watching me, then you have probably already seen him, but if you haven't, head over to his channel and hit the subscribe. I'm Father Skeptic. And I'm out.